We're live. Sergeants, can we please start the backup recordings, please? PC recording is underway. Back up is rolling. Okay. Hello and welcome to today's stated meeting. At this time, I ask everyone to please turn off all electronic devices, turn them to vibrate. Mr. Public Advocate. Uh, no, Madam Majority Leader, the Public Advocate's gonna be speaking to general okay. orders. Madam Majority Leader, it's all yours. Okay. Good afternoon and welcome to the recess stated meeting of May 27th, 2021 being held on June 17th, 2021. I am Majority Leader Lori Cumbo. Roll call. Adams. Present. Every Samuel. Present. Ayala. Present. Barron. Blessed and present. Morelli. Present. Brandon. I'm here. Brooks Powers. Present. Cabrera. Chin. Present. Cornegie. Dharma Diaz. Present. Ruben Diaz. Present. Dinowitz. Present. Drum. Present. Eugene. Felice. Present. Gennaro. Gibson. Jonah. Present. Gredenchik. I am here. Holden. I'm here. Kalos. Bananas. Who? Present. Kozlowitz. Present. Lander. I'm here. Levin. Levine. Lewis. Present. Mizell. Here. Thank you. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. He's here. Moya. Present. Perkins. Powers. Present. Reynoso. Riley. Present. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Rose. Present. Rosenthal. I'm here. Alamanca. Present. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Ballone. I'm here. Van Bramer. Here. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Here. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. I am here. 
Thank you, Mr. Clark. Mike, Thank I'm also Council Member Reynoso's here. I apologize. Thank you. Jim Gennaro here as well. Thank you. Okay, Madam Majority Leader, and, we and have Forgive me, Mr. Clark. Mark Levine is here as well. Thank you, Council Member. Are there any other members who we do not know are here yet? All right. So we have a quorum and thank you. The recessed meeting of May 27th, 2021 is hereby adjourned. We will now open the June 17th, 2021 stated meeting. I'd like to thank you all for joining us at this virtual meeting of the New York City Council. If you would like to follow along, the agenda for today's meeting is posted on our website. Will you please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And we are now going to do roll call once again. Adams. Still present. Every Samuel. Present. Ayala. Aaron. Blessed and present. Morelli. Present. Rannan. Caffeinated and present. Brooks Powers. Present. Cabrera. Chin. Present. Cornegie. Dharma Diaz. Present. Ruben Diaz. Presente. Dinowitz. Present. Drum. Present. Eugene. Felice. Presente. Gennaro. Here. Gibson. Good afternoon, I'm present. Jonai. Present. Grudenshik. Here. Holden. Here. Kalos. Here. Who? Present. Kozlowitz. Here. Lander. Still here. Levin. Levine. Here. Lewis. Present. Myself. Here. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. Present. Moya. Present. Perkins. Powers. Present. Reynoso. Riley. Present. Rivera. Hi. Rodriguez. Presente. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Traeger. Here. I just want to make. Ulrich. Make sure that you got me. Uh, Here. 
Council Member Rosenthal, I think that's your voice. Ben Bramer. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to make sure I'm here. I was marked. You're marked in. Thank you, Council Member Rosenthal. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Here. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. I'm here. Madam Majority Leader, we have a quorum. Matthew Eugene is here. Council Member Eugene is here. Thank you, Council Member Eugene. Council Member Ayala as well. Thank you, Council Member Ayala. All right. Thank you. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Reverend Mark E. Erson, spiritual leader at St. John's Lutheran Church, located at 81 Christopher Street in Manhattan. Welcome. Thank you. Sorry about that. Speaker Johnson, Public Advocate Williams, Majority Leader Combo, and members of council, thank you very much for honoring me to be, to be with you again in this capacity. I bring you greetings from the people of St. John's Lutheran Church in the West Village of Manhattan, serving in the shadow of the Stonewall National Monument. Especially, it is especially a privilege to be here in this month as we celebrate the pride that has grown over the years in the LGBTQIA plus community as we have journeyed from uprising to fuller inclusion, from hidden behind stone walls and closet doors to greater participation in the wider community. But clearly the work is not done. In addition, events and revelations of this past year have brought new awareness of the need for the work that must also be done for other marginalized and oppressed communities so that all might live in peace and dignity. And so we pray. We pray to a power that is greater than us, a wisdom that is deeper than ours. Let us pray. Creator and divine presence, we call you by different names. Yet we share your call to live as your image in the wonder of all that you have made. And we are united by your challenge to build communities of justice and peace. We give you thanks for the privilege to serve. We give you thanks for those who lead with courage, mercy, and wisdom. Be present at this time in this gathering that spans miles. Open our hearts to those who are vulnerable. Open our minds to creatively address the needs of every member of our community. Open our ears to hear the stories of those who live a different life from our own. Open our eyes to see those who the world judges invisible and insignificant. Open our hands to reach out in love and welcome. Kindle and feed the fire that burns in each one of us so that your light might fill every corner warm every chill, and guide every step. In the name of love, for the sake of your peace and your justice. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We will now have today's invocation, which, excuse me, we will now have Speaker Corey Johnson to spread the invocation onto the record. I'm sorry, I was so in deep into your prayer. I lost my space in the reading, but thank you so much for being here. And thank you for giving us an opportunity to be in prayer and meditation with you. Speaker Corey Johnson. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you to Reverend Urson for being here today. The Reverend Marky e. Urson has served as pastor at St. John's in my district since 2011. I can't believe it's been 10 years. Uh, during that time, he has done so much good for the West Village, for the LGBT community, and particularly, I want to highlight his continuous pastoral work and compassion and love for homeless people and a homeless LGBT youth. He is a native New Yorker, 
born on Staten Island while his father was pastor at Messiah Lutheran Church. He has given back to our city in so many ways, including as a teacher, a theater artist, and an advocate for our most vulnerable. And as we celebrate Pride Month, it's important to remember that not everyone feels accepted for who they are or who they love. Many young people have families who have shunned them for coming out. And we need people like Pastor Mark to lift them up and remind them how they are truly perfect. I am deeply grateful to have him as a leader in my council district. And I am really honored that he is here today. So Mark, happy pride. Thanks as always for uh, your beautiful invocation. Uh, so I make a motion for unanimous consent that the invocation be spread in full upon the record. Thank you so much, Speaker Johnson. We will now have the adoption of minutes by council member Sylvina Brooks Powers. Thank you. I make a motion that the minutes of the civic meeting of May 12, 2021 be adopted as printed. Thank you so much. Messages and papers from the mayor. None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. None. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. None. Thank you. We will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, good afternoon and <clears throat> welcome to our stated meeting today. Happy Pride to everyone. This is a time to celebrate the amazing work of the LGBTQ community and renew the fight to make our city and country a better, more inclusive place. We have a lot of work to do and I know so many of you are committed to do that work. I'm proud of the work that this body has done and will continue to do for the LGBT community that I'm honored to be part of. On Saturday, our country marks the anniversary of the end of slavery, Juneteenth. We ended slavery, but racial discrimination, as we know, still plagues our country. I'm really glad that President Biden is gonna make Juneteenth a federal holiday by signing it into law. Uh, we can't stop fighting until every American is treated equally, regardless of their race, gender, or sexual orientation. Before I delve into our legislative agenda, I'd like to provide an update on COVID-19 as we always do. On Tuesday of this week, we hit a tragic milestone as we counted 600,000 Americans, 600,000 Americans who have died from COVID-19. That's probably an undercount. That includes 33,358 of our fellow New Yorkers as of yesterday. As we celebrate the reopening of our city, it's important to remember those we have lost to this virus and urge more New Yorkers to get vaccinated. As I do at every state, I wanna <clears throat> remember the lives of those lost recently to 9-11 related illnesses. We mourn the passing of retired police officer, Stephen Rodriguez, who died on June 9th. He was 67 years old. We also lost firefighter Anthony Malfi on June 8th. This month, we also lost New Yorkers several New Yorkers who helped shape our city, including Herb Sturz. He was a founding member of the Vere Institute of Justice and a pioneer for the ongoing efforts to close Rikers Island. He worked at the Open Society uh, and was a key component of the coalition that formed the Lippman Commission named after former Chief Judge uh, Lippman. Uh, Herb Sturz was an amazing, amazing man. If you haven't had a chance, please read the obituary of him in the New York Times. He did so much for our city. Uh, he was there the day that we voted to close Rikers Island. Uh, and I'm just really grateful for everything that he did for the city that we all love. We're also mourning the passing of Judge Robert Katzman, who died on June 9th. He recently finished a seventh year term as chief judge of the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. And he was one of the country's leading jurists. The council worked closely with Judge Katzman to fund the Immigrant Family Unity Project and the Immigrant Justice Corps. I met with him about a month before uh, COVID-19 hit, and he was talking about how we needed to provide legal services to immigrants in New York City. We extend our deepest sympathies to his wife, Jennifer Callahan, and his family. He was an amazing, amazing, amazing man. We also lost Brooklyn Federal Judge Jack Weinstein. He was a true believer in the rehabilitation of people convicted of a crime. He worked in the Brooklyn federal court system for more than 50 years. He retired last year at the age of 98 years old. 
who died just a week ago at the age of 99. He was an amazing man as well. Let us pause for a moment of silence for Stephen Rodriguez, Anthony Malfi, Herb Sturz, Judge Katzman, and Judge Weinstein. Thank you. Now into our agenda for today, out of the land use community, we'll be voting on the following items an 860 seat primary and intermediate school in council member Idanis Rodriguez's district, West 16th Street special permit in council member Mark Traeger's district, bed Central and North in council member Robert Cornegie's district, Melrose Open Door in council member Rafael Salamanca's district, 361 City Island rezoning in council member Mark Jonai's district, St. Joseph's 1949 Bathgate Avenue in council member Oswald Feliz's district, 30-02 Newtown Avenue rezoning in council district 22, 72-H transfer of block 3930 and lot 50 in minority leader Matteo's district. Out of the finance committee, we'll be voting on introduction number 1859, sponsored by minority leader Matteo, which will make permanent an expansion to the alternative veterans property tax exemption that the council first passed in 2017. And from the staff on all those items, I wanna thank Stephanie Ruiz, Noah Brick, Rebecca Chasen, Emery Dev, and Andrew Wilbur. In addition, we have a pre-considered resolution that would provide a 0.5% discount to people who pay their property taxes early in fiscal year 2022. We're also voting on four article 11 property tax exemptions as follows. 50th Street HDFC in Council Member Carlos Menchaca's district to preserve 40, 48 units of affordable rental housing. Joe Uptown, spanning Council Member Bill Perkins and Mark Levine in the Adonis Rodriguez's districts. Uh, Carol Burke HDFC in Council Member Salamanca's district. Habitat Net Zero Homes in Council Member Adams and Miller's districts. And we have three home rule messages SLR number eight which would allow certain Carpenters members of the city's pension systems to stop paying additional member contributions. SLR number nine, uh, which would provide that going forward, promotions of certain supervisory positions in the New York City Department of Sanitation will be subject to competitive examination. SLR number 10, which would adjust age and service requirements for retirement benefits to allow automotive workers to start their careers later in life. Moving on to our legislative agenda from our land use committee, Introduction number 1572B, sponsored by public advocate Jumani Williams and our land use chair, Rafael Salamanca, will create a new requirement for applicants for most land use actions to provide the city planning commission and public uh, with a report on racial equity in connection with their project. These reports will include a statement describing how the proposed project relates to the city's goals and strategies for, a form, for, for affirmatively furthering fair housing and promoting equitable access to opportunity. Moving on, our next bill comes out of the government Oper Governmental Operations Committee, sponsored by Councilmember Fernando Cabrera. Introduction number 2257 will require the Board of Standards and Appeals upon issuing a decision affecting the use of a parcel of land to cause a copy of the decision to be recorded in the appropriate title recording system. This will ensure that purchasers are made aware of any relevant BSA decisions prior to purchasing a property from the staff, I want to thank Christopher Murray, Elizabeth Cronk, and Emily Forgione. Next, we have a bill related to our city's vital community and ethnic media sector. New Yorkers from all over the world and ethnic and community media outlets play a vital role in keeping New Yorkers informed about what happens here and in their countries of origin. In May of 2019, Mayor de Blasio issued Executive Order 47, requiring all mayoral agencies to direct at least 50% of their annual print and digital advertising budgets towards community and ethnic media. Introduction 2313A, sponsored by Council Member Idanis Rodriguez, will codify and expand upon Executive Order 47. This bill will require any mayoral agencies to seek to direct at least 50% of their annual print, digital, television, and radio advertising budgets towards ethnic and community media. In addition, it will create a new office of ethnic and community media headed by an executive director. From the staff, I wanna thank Sarah Ginsburg, Christopher Murray, Elizabeth Cronk and Emily Forgione. Moving on, we're also voting on introduction number 2353, sponsored by Councilmember Antonio Reynoso from the Committee on Sanitation. 
Local Law 55 of 2019 gave the Business Integrity Commission the authority to establish standards for the registration of unions representing workers in the private carding industry. These unions must report the names of all officers and agents of the union and information about each officer, including criminal convictions, civil or criminal actions and investigations. The Business Integrity Commission now has the authority to disqualify an officer of a labor union from holding office if they provide false information or the subject of a pending indictment or criminal action, have been convicted of certain crimes, have committed racketeering or associated with organized crime. The law currently allows BIC to regulate all trade waste unions. This bill would limit the unions that are under the regulation of BIC pursuant to Local Law 55 to those that represent employees in the protestable trade waste industry. Local Law 55 was passed to address issues of company controlled unions in the putrescible trade waste industry. And this amendment would ensure that the bill is narrowly tailored to address the issue while still remaining effective. I wanna thank the staff, Nicole Aben. Now, from our Committee on Transportation, we're voting on introduction number 946B, sponsored by Councilmember Brad Lander. The bill will ban the practice of on-call scheduling for utility safety employees who locate and mark underground infrastructure or inspect gas pipe fusions and joints. The bill will prohibit employers from canceling, changing, or adding work shifts within 72 hours of the start of the shift, except in limited circumstances. And I want to thank Lewis Children Brown from the staff. The final two bills are from the Small Business Committee, and they are aimed at helping small businesses in part by providing them with a chance to fix violations before facing hefty penalties and with amnesty. Small businesses are the lifeblood of our city, and they are critical to our city's recovery. We need them to stay afloat, but they can't do that if they're drowning in financial penalties. Introduction number 2233A, sponsored by Councilmember Vanessa Gibson and myself, would provide much needed civil penalty relief for certain sanitation, health and transportation, consumer affairs, noise control and buildings violations. Council staff reviewed all of the city's laws and rules to identify places where we could lower penalties or give a business the opportunity to fix a violation without receiving a fine. We identified 185 offenses where uh, we can provide businesses with a relief without sacrificing health, safety and consumer protections. The bill would set fixed penalties at the bottom of existing penalty ranges, lower existing penalty ceilings, or lower existing fixed penalties. In addition, the bill would allow cure periods or warnings for certain first violations. From the staff, I want to thank, uh, 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 sorry, Janita John and Mark Chen and Tanjia Wright. The final bill we're voting on today is introduction number 2234A, sponsored by Councilor Mark Joni, the chair of our Committee on Small Businesses, and it would create an amnesty program to allow New Yorkers and small businesses to resolve outstanding judgments of the city. Under the program, New Yorkers would be able to resolve judgments docketed during COVID by paying just 25% of the penalty with interest and penalties waived. Judgments entered before COVID could be resolved by paying 75% of the penalty. And again, I wanna thank uh, Janita, John, Mark Chen, and Tangia Wright. And with that, I turn it over to you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you all very much. Congratulations to everyone who's passing bills today. Thank you so much, Speaker Johnson. We will now move into discussion of general orders. We will recognize council members who wish to speak by using the raise hand function in Zoom. Please wait before you begin your remarks for our Sergeant at Arms to announce he has begun the countdown clock. The Sergeant at Arms will alert you when your time has expired. I just wanna make sure and to be clear so that everyone knows, um, we are only discussing at this time the bills that we are about to vote on. Other issues um, in terms of legislation that you're looking to pass in the future um, or other matters or celebratory matters that we uh, often like to discuss at this time can be discussed during general discussion. So are there any, matter, any members who wish to speak at this time, Mr. Parliamentarian? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. First, the public advocate wishes to be recognized pursuant to Charter Section 24E, followed by Council Members Salamanca and Matteo. Time starts now. You may begin. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Majority Leader. Thank you, Speaker Johnson. Um, uh, speaking on behalf of uh, Intro 1572B, the racial impact study will require the creation of a citywide equitable development data tool 
which would be used to study and assess the potential racial and ethnic impact of most rezonings on the neighborhood in question. The racial impact study would analyze and the report would reflect demographic conditions, household economic security, neighbor quality of life and access to opportunity, housing security, affordable and affordability and quality, housing production and displacement risk index. The bill will also uh, require that there's a statement uh, of how the project relates to the goals and strategies of affirmatively further fair how furthering fair housing and promote equitable access to opportunity. Uh, this bill, I believe, is going to change the way our city grows and develops forever. We have seen time and time again uh, where the forces of gentrification displacement have continued to force people and communities from their home. Many times when we hear about these rezonings, it's presented that's going to be great for the city. What we find is that it only helps certain parts of the city, certain communities. Yesterday, my office released a report that makes clear the need for and benefits of the racial impact study. Sadly, both developers and the city have been reluctant to recognize the role of rezonings in this racial and ethnic displacement, the gentrification that it either helps or uh, sparks, I'm sorry, either uh, makes worse or actually sparks, much less take adequate action to prevent it. Today, we're forcing action. We're making racial equity not only part of the conversation, but part of this bill. Uh, the bill requires that we analyze and consider demographic conditions, house and the things that I mentioned. I want to thank uh, Speaker Johnson for helping us get this bill to the floor. I want to thank uh, Chair Salamanca, who is a co-sponsor from day one. Very much appreciated. I just want to thank my staff, Casey in Addison in particular, all the work that she's done. Delcinia Glover, Anika Michelle, Veronica uh, Avies, Nick Smith, Mike Toomey. Uh, from the land use, I want to thank Raju Mann, uh, George Sarkisan, uh, Julie Lubin, Brian Paul, uh, Caitlin Greer, and of course, Jason Goldman, who I know we had a wonderful time uh, trying to get this. I'm expired. Thank, thank you so much, everyone. And thank you to the body who will be passing this today. Thank you, Council. Excuse me. Thank you, Public Advocate Williams. And we will now go to Council Member Salamanca. Salamanca. Time starts. Yes. Thank you, Majority Leader. Um, today we'll be voting to approve uh, pre um, intro 1572B, which is a groundbreaking legislation that has the potential to change the way we think about land use and housing policies as a country. Intro 1572B, sponsored by Public Advocate Jamani Williams and myself, would require the creation of a new citywide equitable development data database and require land use applicants to draft racial equity reports on housing and opportunities within their project area. The proposed bill would require applicants for certain land use actions to provide the city planning commission and public with a report on racial equity in connection with their project. These new racial equity reports on housing and opportunities will include a statement describing how the proposed project relates to the city goals and strategies for affirmatively furthering fair housing and promoting equitable access to opportunity. Moreover, these racial equity reports would be required to draw data for a local study area from a newly created equitable development data tool established by the Department of Housing Preservation and Development and City Planning, where citywide, borough-wide, neighborhood, and community district levels. The equitable development data tool will provide data on six categories, demographics, economic security, neighborhood quality of life and access opportunity, housing security and affordability, housing production and a displacement risk index comprised of indicators of population vulnerability, housing conditions and neighborhood change. The bill would require data to be desegregated by race and ethnicity and include a 20 year look back for trends wherever available. I would like to thank Public Advocate Williams for his leadership on this issue. The advocates, specifically Rob Solano from Cuff. Uh, for their tireless advocacy and pushing for meaningful policy that aims to correct the wrongs of previous administrations. And I need to give a big shout out to Speaker Johnson and Jason Goldman. This is an extremely complex bill and it's a time to get it right. And I wanna thank you all for helping negotiate this. And I also need to thank the land use team um, and, and the land use division. Thank you, Mrs. Lee. Thank you, Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Councilmember Salamanca. Councilmember Matteo, Minority Leader Matteo. Thank you. I'm start now. Four years ago, the city council passed the alternative exemption for veterans, a bill I sponsored that expanded the prior veteran exemption to include the school portion of property taxes. The alternative exemption is available for veterans who served in a time of war, as well as disabled veterans and gold star parents. Currently, about 37,000 households receive the veterans alternative exemption, 
with an average saving of $1,112 off of their tax bills, according to the Department of Finance. This financial relief is needed now more than ever as so many New Yorkers have suffered loss during this pandemic and the consequential economic downturn. However, as part of a compromise with the administration when we pass this legislation, the alternative exemption for veterans is set to sunset next June at the end of fiscal year 2022. We could have allowed the next council to handle this problem and the future of the alternative property tax exemption would have remained uncertain. But I strongly believe that we have a responsibility to our veterans to ensure that we provide this benefit to them. I think most of you would agree after all they have done for our city and our country, they absolutely deserve this. I wanna thank the speaker, my colleagues, finance staff, my staff and Jason Goldman especially for working with me to ensure we pass this important bill this year. Thank you and I urge all of my colleagues to vote yes. Thank you, Minority Leader Maddie. Are there any other members that wish to speak, Mr. Parliamentarian? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council Member Rodriguez, followed by Council Member Yeager. Council Member Rodriguez, you may begin following the time clock signal. Time starts now. Thank you, Majority Leader. I'm here speaking on behalf of Intro 2313, which is the bill that will create the mayor's office the mayor's office of Egni and community media. This only can be possible with people that they have vision, people that they also had a committed to understand that New York City has been made by 35% of New Yorkers like myself, who, who English, is not the, English is not the first language. However, we contribute with taxes in different ways to our city. That's why this bill being have co-prime, co Speaker Corey Johnson who believe in this, Brooklyn Board President Eric Adams and uh, Oswald Felix. What this bill with us, as a speaker explained before, is that for the first time, New York City became the first largest municipality in the whole nation that will build a permanent office of the mayor's office for ethnic and community media, where some of those 50% of those millions of dollars that we spend on advertising will be dedicated to those who do TV, radio, blog newspaper who doesn't necessarily speak English as a first language. They are the yeshiva, they are Jewish, they are white, they are Asian, they African, they Latino. They own, they use their own newspaper, they use their own TV program. And we believe that by making this, coming out with this office for the first time, what we are saying is those people who use those media, who not, who they don't speak the English, but they contribute with the taxes. We are giving the respect we are given in the dignity and we recognize that in the past we have failed. Many people have not been informed or educated about the lack of cleaning in our streets for so many years in New York City. Those individuals who use those ethnic the media, they have not been educated when it comes to how we should encourage and connect all New Yorkers to eat healthy, especially during the time of COVID, where we fail in many underserved communities. With this initiative, we will be sure that all New Yorkers, regardless of the language they will speak, they will be connected, informed on where and how the city provides so many services to New Yorkers. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Rodriguez. Council Member Yeager. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I want to speak very briefly on Resolution 1671, uh, which we are adopting today, that would provide, as we do typically every year, uh, the half percent uh, discount uh, per annum for. Uh, early payment of real property taxes. Uh, as I uh, discussed last month on the Florida's Council, uh, last month we received the communication from uh, the New York City Banking Commission, which we have typically, uh, not just this body or this session of the council, but uh, council sessions in the past have typically rubber stamped. And as you would recall, my council colleagues, we uh, had a robust discussion last year about that interest rate, which uh, I believe to be usurious. Um, it, it is uh, highly uh, penalizing of New Yorkers who simply can't afford to pay their taxes. People who can't afford to pay their taxes are getting the kinds of percentages. Uh, and this year, as recommended by the Banking Commission, of uh, three and a quarter, four and a half percent, 12 percent or 18 percent, some of which we actually adopted last year. Now, I know there are discussions within the council uh, at the staff level of coming up with a lower percentage. But the purpose of my rising today, my friends, is to point out that we are giving New Yorkers who pay early a half a percent discount. 
So the city of New York is valuing the early payment of taxes at a half a percent. But if one is late, the city of New York wants to value that lateness as needing a penalty of three and a quarter, four and a half, 12 percent or 18 percent uh, property size dependent. So as we go out about the rest of this month and we will be voting on this later this month, I urge my colleagues to really look at this and decide whether the kind of penalties we want to impose on New Yorkers ought to be that much higher than the half a percent discount that we are offering New Yorkers who pay early. Thank you very much, Madam President. Thank you so much, Councilmember Yeager. Are there any other members who wish to speak at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Councilmember Brooks Powers. Councilmember Brooks Powers, you may begin following the time clock signal. Time starts now. Thank you. I just wanted to briefly speak to two um, bills, intro 1572. Um, I wanted to commend uh, public advocate Jumani Williams, as well as all of the council members who signed on to sponsor. I think that this piece of legislation is a critical tool that will help to move the city forward as we continue to strive to have a more equitable city. The same goes for um, intro 2313, um, with the, which establishes the Office of Ethnic and Community Media. Um, considering that I represent a district that is um, predominantly African-American with also one sixth one six Hispanic and Latino, um, over 25% in my community speak a language other than English at home. And it's so important to be able to not only create opportunities that we are um, removing language barriers, but we're also um, creating opportunities where we would be allocating resources to spend in media outlets that can speak to these communities. So um, I thank all of the sponsors for putting pushing forward such um, helpful bills and moving our city forward in the way we need to. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Brooks Powers. Are there any other members who wish to speak at this time? No, Madam Majority Leader. All right, then we will go into the report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Finance, intro 1859, Veterans Exemption. Couple of general orders. Reconsidered Reso 1671, discount percentage. Couple of general orders. Reconsidered LU 808 and Reso 1672 through Preconsidered LU 811 and Reso 1675, tax exemptions. Couple of general orders. Report of the Committee on Governmental Operations, Intro 2257, Board of Standards and Appeals. Couple of general orders. Intro 2313A, Office of Ethnic and Community Media. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, Intro 1572B, Equitable Development Tools. Amended and coupled on general orders. LUs 790 and 791, 909, Castle Hill Avenue rezoning. Approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Section 197D of the New York City Charter. LU 792 and Reso 1676 and LU 797 and Reso 1677 zoning amendments. Coupled on general orders. LU 798 and Reso 1678 through LU 802 and Reso 1682 Melrose Open Door. Coupled on general orders. LU 803 and Reso 1683 and LU 804 and Reso 1684 Bedsty Central and North Phase 2. Coupled on general orders. LU 805 and Reso 1685 transfer of city owned property. Coupled on general orders. LU 806 and Reso 1686 and LU 807 and Reso 1687, St. Joseph's, 1949, Bathgate Avenue. Coupled on general orders. Preconsidered LU 812 and Reso 1688, School Facility Council District 10. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Sanitation and Solid Waste Management. Preconsidered Intro 2353, Trade Waste Industry Unions. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Small Business, Intro 2233A, Various Provisions. Amended and coupled to general orders. Intro 2234A, Environmental Control Board. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on State and Federal Legislation, preconsidered SLR 8 through preconsidered SLR 10, various home rule messages. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Transportation, Intro 946B, Utility Safety Employees. Amended and coupled on general orders. And on the general orders calendar, LU 785 and Reso 1689 and LU 786 and Reso 1690, 30-02 Newtown Avenue. Couple of general orders. And at this time, I'm gonna ask the clerk to take a roll call vote 
on all of the items that we just discussed that are coupled on today's general order calendar. Good afternoon, Council Member Borelli. Thank you, I vote aye on all except uh, intros 946B, 1572, and 2313A, thank you. Thank you. Council Member Kalos. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Adams. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you. thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, congratulating and thanking all of my colleagues for their very important legislation today, in particular. Thanks to Public Advocate Jamani Williams and Council Member Salamanca. Uh, for intro 1572B, the racial impact study, which is so very, very, very important and long overdue. Uh, very grateful for this. Just wanted to mention uh, and thank also as co-chair of the Black, Latino, and Asian Caucus, our members, our caucus members who pushed this legislation forward to make it a reality today. With that, I do vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ampri Samuel. I vote aye. Ayala. I'd also like to congratulate my colleagues and I vote aye. Baron. Councilmember Baron, you're on yeah. mute. Can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. Thank you. I vote aye on all and special congratulations on the passage of 1572. Thank you. Thank you. Brennan. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Brooks Powers. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you. So I just wanted to also congratulate the um, sponsors, especially prime sponsor, Council Member Matteo on intro 1859, recognizing how um, critically important our veteran community um, is to all of us. Um, so I think this piece of legislation is something that I wish did not have a sunset that we have to come here each time, but I am, you know, looking forward to working with my colleagues to continue to strengthen resources and opportunities for our veteran community. And so I just wanted to make a point of recognition for that. And I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Cabrera. I vote aye. Chin. Congratulations to my colleagues on so many important legislation for our small business and for our ethnic and community. Uh, and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Carnegie. Councilmember Carnegie, you're on mute. Okay, we'll come back. Sure. Dharma Diaz. Aye, on all. Thank you. Ruben Diaz. Uh, I would like to congratulate Madam Majority Leader for her frequently appearance on TV. And other than that, I vote yes on all. <laughs> Thank you. Dinowitz. I vote aye on all. Drum. Aye. Eugene. Uh, I, I vote aye. Thank you. Elise. Uh, aye on all. Congratulations to all my colleagues, including and especially my good friend, Council Member Dennis Rodriguez. Thank you. Thank you. Gennaro. Yes. Gibson. Councilmember Gibson. 
We'll come back. Sure. Jonai. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Um, starts. Thank you, Majority Leader. I just want to thank all of the council staff that worked so hard on the passage of the two bills that are going to aid our small businesses, ensuring that give them a fighting chance. And the amnesty bill, which is going to be a tremendous difference for those that are still in business um, and call New York City home. We hope the right message is being delivered to business owners around the world that New York is the place to do business. And we invite you to be here as we make New York City, continue to make New York City the great city that it is. Uh, with that, I vote aye on all and congratulations to all those that are passing the bills today. Thank you. Salamanca. Aye on all. Miller. Councilmember Miller, you might be on mute. Permission, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts Thank now. You. Okay. Thank you so much, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, first off, um, I want to just say that I, I will be uh, voting aye on all with the exception of 946B, uh, to which I will be abstaining. Uh, this is a slippery slope for this council and any other council uh, that comes along in the future, as this is a matter remains a matter of collective bargaining. Clearly, there has been a precedent with fast food workers where we deal with this critical issue of, of scheduling uh, and other such issues. But um, as a past president and, and, and business agent, uh, matters such as this and collective bargaining is the cornerstone of the labor movement. What we as a body can do to support organized labor is to continue to support the right to organize and certainly to support the right to collective bargaining. Uh, as a labor chair, uh, I am not satisfied that all was not done uh, to resolve this issue from a collective bargaining and strategic standpoint by the exclusive bar bargaining agent um, that is has been designated. And therefore, um, I will be abstaining. I want to congratulate the public advocate and, and land use chair Salamanca on their due diligence along with members of the Black Latino and the Asian Caucus on the passage of um, the racial equity impact uh, legislation. And finally, uh, I, I, I want to say that uh, myself and Council Member Adams have 13 new homes, uh, restored homes coming up, which will be a part of the Net Zero Habitat program. And we will continue to uh, provide opportunities to build wealth through home ownership and communities of color through such a program. With that, I, I, I would all, with the exception of 946B, and wish everyone a happy Juneteenth. Thank you, Councilmember Miller. Rorenchik. I vote aye and all. I want to wish all the fathers out there a happy Father Day, uh, Father's Day, and a, a joyous Juneteenth, uh, which will celebrate as a federal holiday for the first time this Saturday. And with that, I yield the balance of my time, even though I didn't ask for any time majority leader combo. Thank you. Thank you, and happy Father's Day to you, too. Hold it. Thank you. I on all, and happy Father's Day, everyone. Thank you, and to you as well, Councilmember Koo. I will I, and happy Father's Day to all. Kozlowitz. I vote on him. Happy Father's Day and happy Juneteenth. Lander. Request permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank Thanks. You. Now. Thank you, Majority Leader. Thank you to my colleagues for your support of intro 946B to ban on call scheduling for utility safety employees. Utility service uh, safety workers do critical essential work marking the location of utilities so they can be safely excavated prior to construction projects. 
This work is not emergency based, but scheduled in advance. Nonetheless, utility safety workers can be called in at any time of day or night, leading to sleep deprivation and exhaustion. Banning on-call scheduling, as we did for fast food and retail workers, will make their job quality better and make all of us safer. I want to thank the Communications Workers of America for organizing with and representing these workers. CWA represents these workers in collective bargaining and have asked the council to provide this critical safety protection for these workers. Thank you to Elliot Lynn and Lewis Cholden Brown, as well as Megan Flynn and Steph Sokowski uh, from my team. I also want to speak briefly about intro 1572, the racial impact study, and say a big thank you and congratulations to the public advocate, Councilmember Salamanca, and Churches United for Fair Housing. We know from ta Coates's work, from Richard Rothstein's book, The Color of Law, that public policy, including land use policy, has furthered segregation and discrimination in our city through redlining, restrictive covenants, tax breaks, the siting of public and affordable housing, and yes, through rezonings as well. So it is critical that we evaluate the racial impact of proposed land use actions, just as we evaluate the environmental impact. Um, and I'm proud to be a co-sponsor of this important legislation. Um, even though this legislation is prospective and would not cover the Gowanus neighborhood rezoning, I am committed to ensuring that an independent third-party racial impact study is conducted of the Gowanus neighborhood rezoning before it reaches this council for consideration that would fully comply with this bill. Uh, thank you very much, and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Council member Carnegie. Vote aye on all. Thank you, sir. Levin. I want to wish everybody a uh, happy Father's Day and a happy Juneteenth. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Levine. I vote aye on all. Lewis. I vote aye on all and congrats to all bill sponsors. Mizell. Yes. I vote aye. Thank you. Moya. I vote aye. Perkins. Okay, I don't see Councilmember Perkins. Councilmember Powers. Aye. Thank you. Reynoso. I vote aye on all with a congratulations to uh, Councilmember Salamanca and Public Advocate Jumani Williams for the racial impact study legislation. Thank you. Riley. I vote aye on all and congratulations to all my colleagues and happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there this weekend. Thank you, Councilmember Rivera. Congratulations to my colleagues, I vote aye. Rodriguez. Okay, we'll come back to Council Member Rodriguez. Council Member Rose. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Time starts now. I, I just want to thank and congratulate um, Public Advocate Williams and Council Member Salamanca for their hard work. They are going to keep a lot of issues that we face every time we do a rezoning, um, uh, sort of make them non-existent. So I wanna, I wanna thank them for this historic legislation um, that will address the historic housing inequities and bring about housing justice and racial equity, um, this good work. Uh, and anyone who's done a rezoning uh, knows that this is a crucial piece. So I, I wanna thank you, public advocate and, and council member Salamanca. And I vote aye on all. Thank you. Uh, council member Rodriguez. Okay. Council member Rosenthal. I vote aye and all. Thank you. Traeger. Aye. Thank you. Ulrich. 
Uh, good afternoon. I'd like to vote aye on all and just congratulate all the bill sponsors today, uh, especially uh, Council Member Matteo for uh, shepherding that veterans tax exemption through the council. It's, it's a great bill. It's going to help a lot of families across the city. And once again, I vote aye on all and congratulations to all of today's sponsors. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Vallone. Thank you. I'd like to vote aye on all and wish all of us super dads out there a happy Father's Day. God bless it. Ben Bramer. Thank you. I too would like to thank Minority Leader Matteo uh, for his work on behalf of veterans. I'm, of course, married to a veteran and uh, particularly want to congratulate public advocate uh, Jamani Williams and Councilmember Salamanca for that incredibly important piece of legislation, which I'm proud to co sponsor. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Jaeger. Madam President, may I be excused to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time Thank starts you. now. Thank you, Madam President. Um, I just wish briefly to address intro uh, 2234, which I will be voting in favor of, um, but I do think it could be done better and it could have been done better. This bill will, um, uh, instead of getting rid of all the uh, summonses and judgments that were done during the time when New York was in a shutdown and when New York City could have been a little better to its citizens, uh, instead will require that in order to resolve it, uh, the individual or the entity fined would have to pay up to 25% in some instances, up to 75% of the penalties in other instances. And in any event, in order to avail themselves of this program, may actually have to pay a fee of a dollar. I mean, we put, a, we put a piece in this bill that allows the commissioner to charge a fee of a dollar for an application. Like we couldn't walk away from that dollar. We could have done better for the people of New York. We should have done better for the people of New York. And I have two bills exactly on this topic. Uh, intro 2287 with 12 co-sponsors would require the dismissal of summonses issued during this period. Uh, and introduction 2069 would have suspended all these offenses uh, that were that were uh, the ticket quota agents were running around the city issuing while everybody was supposed to stay inside behind locked doors. So we could be doing better. We should be doing better, notwithstanding. Uh, that's what's on the floor today. And I'm not going to stand in the way of progress or uh, let the perfect be the enemy of the OK. So I will vote in favor of this. And I vote aye on all, with the exception of uh, introduction number 2313, which I abstain um, because I believe that the city can place the ads where it needs to place the ads and doesn't need a new office to decide that. Uh, certainly this program could be run out of an existing office without creating yet another level of bureaucracy to add into this mess of a government that we have. Thank you very much, Madam President. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Gibson. Permission to explain? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Good afternoon, Speaker, and all my colleagues. Um, I want to join the chorus of colleagues in uh, congratulating Public Advocate Jamani Williams and Council Member Rafael Salamanca on leading the effort on the racial uh, impact study as it relates to neighborhood rezonings and making sure that we maintain the character of our communities, but we also know uh, the racial impact that a lot of these changes would have on our communities across the city. Um, as someone who's been through a rezoning, certainly I learned a lot uh, that I don't want to repeat any of those mistakes, but bills like this would make a tremendous difference moving forward. So I want to thank Public Advocate Williams, Councilmember Salamanca, Churches United, and all of the advocates for their role in this. I want to speak up about my bill, many of, of which you supported, uh, intro 2233, which would provide the civil penalty relief for many of our small businesses from certain notices around sanitation, health, transportation, consumer affairs, noise control, and buildings violations. We need to do a lot more as a city and as an administration to really support our small businesses. We say they're the lifeblood, they're the foundation, but we have to show it with actions. And many of them during the pandemic have been subjected to numerous violations. There are thousands of guidelines and rules that businesses have to follow, and we have to do more to educate them and not have a punitive enforcement arm as we are traveling around the city. We have to make sure we educate them, provide outreach uh, in language diversity to make sure that they understand the rules. But we also know that we can give warnings instead of initial 
violations. And this legislation, intro 2233, will set forth to do that. Uh, the staff worked so hard on this and identified almost 200 violations that does not impede on anyone's public health nor public safety for consumers and or staff. And so these are violations that are minor um, that really would not make a big impact on the operation of the business. And we truly believe that this is a step forward in the right um, direction. Um, so I want to thank Chair Mark Jonah. I know the members of the Small Business Committee. Congratulations to all my colleagues on your bills. Happy Father's Day and celebration of Juneteenth. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Gibson. Thank you, Councilmember Rodriguez. Thank you, Speaker Johnson, uh, Majority Leader. Uh, I would like to have, have permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Time starts now. Hoy es un día muy importante, muy histórico para la comunidad nuestra de inmigrantes. Estamos pasando un proyecto de ley, producto del liderazgo de presidente del condado de Brooklyn, Eric Adams, el speaker Corey Johnson, Oswald Felix, Oswald no just thank me. I had to thank you because you also joined this effort to make this bill possible. Juntos estamos hoy pasando este proyecto de ley donde el 50% del dinero que invierte la ciudad en advertising será invertido en la prensa étnica y comunitaria. Estamos hablando que programas como de Ramón Aníbal, de César Romero, de Nazario, que están desde los ochentas y la ciudad nunca le había puesto un centavo y aquí en adelante la ciudad se comprometerá en este proyecto de ley a invertir. Sabemos de que en esta ciudad por años las calles no la han limpiado. Sin embargo, la ciudad tiene que invertir sobre cómo la comunidad debe estar informada, si se limpia o no nuestra calle. También sabemos que en la ciudad de Nueva York se invierten millones de dólares en campañas como Municipal ID, Vision Zero, el programa de COVID. Sin embargo, ese dinero nunca ha llegado a las comunidades que hablan español como yo o que hablan otro idioma en la comunidad judía, asiática, eh, afri africana. Por lo tanto, solamente con liderazgo de voces, como es el presidente del condado de Brooklyn, Eric Adams, como es el speaker Corey Johnson, como es Oswald Félix, con el apoyo de la administración también, eh, gracias a Jason Goldman, a Jeff y a todos los que han trabajado en este, en este proyecto. Also, thank you to Evelyn Collado, my ladies lady, Elizabeth Conformer, my chief is time to Margarita, my communication person. So with that, I vote aye. Thank you, Council Member Rodriguez. Mario. No on 946, 2313, and 1572, I and the rest. Thank you. Humbo. I vote aye. Thank you. Speaker Johnson. Congratulations to everyone passing bills today. I have an eye on all. Happy Father's Day, remembering my dad who I lost uh, nine years ago. Okay, thank you for that moment. All items in today's general order calendar have a vote of 48 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, with the exception of the following items. Introduction 2313A has 45 in the affirmative, two in the negative, one abstention. Introduction 1572B with 46 in the affirmative, two in the negative, no abstentions. And lastly, introduction 946B has 45 in the affirmative, two in the negative, one abstention. Thank you. Councilman Yeager, is that correct? I mean that seriously. Thank you, Billy. <clears throat> Thank you so much. The items on today's general orders calendar are adopted. Introduction and reading of bills. All bills have been referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. 
Thank you. There are no resolutions on today's calendar, so we will move into general discussion. As a reminder, please wait until the Sergeant at Arms begins the countdown clock before you begin your remarks. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any council members signed up to speak? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council members Brooks Powers and Council member Barron. Council member Brooks Powers, you may begin. Time starts now. Thank you. I would like to take a moment to acknowledge the death of Justin Wallace, who is a 10 year old um, who was shot in my district several weeks ago. Um, I ask that the body keeps the family and um, your continued thought and prayers. Um, the loss of Justin is a reminder um, and, and also a rep a uh, reminder in what it represents to our city um, in terms of the senseless gun violence that continues to take place. And we must continue to do the work to remove dangerous guns from the streets of New York. Fortunately, a suspect has been arrested and we are one step closer to delivering justice, justice for the Wallace family. Um, and also, I wanted to take a moment to recognize the Queens alumni chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. We celebrated our 70th anniversary on June 4th. It's an honor and privilege to be a member and to know so many women doing such great work across the Queens community, the city, the state, and the world. And I'm so excited and honored to represent them here in the council. Thank you. Thank you so much. Council Member Barron. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. First, I want to wish everyone a happy Father's Day. And included in that group for the first time is my son, Juwanza. He and my daughter in love, Fiona Grant, gave birth to their first child, born on June 11th at 7.30 in the morning, weighing seven and a half pounds and 20 inches long. His name is Jariah Yumwesi. And Jariah means godlike, courageous, powerful leader. And Yemwesi means God has given us a healthy child. So God's blessings to them. I want to talk briefly about Juneteenth. We know that the Civil War was a battle that was waged for several reasons, the industry versus the agricultural and states' rights and the expansion of slavery. And one of the great fallacies of American history is the uh, statement that Lincoln freed the slaves. But we know that Lincoln said if he could preserve the Union without doing that, he would have. And ironically and hypocritically, what he did do was to free the slaves in those states that were in rebellion, those states that were still a part of the Union that held people in slavery were not told that they had to free their slaves. Such as if someone could tell some children in my house that they don't have to go to bed at eight o'clock, they can stay up to 12. You don't have jurisdiction there. So that's a fallacy which exists to this day, but we wanna call attention to that. And most people think that Juneteenth is about uh, Sherman riding into Galveston and reading the special order number 15, I believe it is, saying that the, uh, those who were enslaved were freed. But the reality is if you saw the movie Glory, if you read the book Forced Into Glory by Lerone Bennett, or the book Introduction to Black Studies by Milana Karenga, or the book Like Men of War, Black Troops in the Civil War by Noah Andre, you would know the reality is that Blacks were always involved in liberating others who were enslaved, such as Harriet Tubman and Nat Turner had done previously. So I just wanna say Juneteenth is a holiday that we're glad to celebrate. It acknowledges a great event, although there were many battles that were fought after June 10th, Juneteenth that occurred. And we just want to call attention also to a statement by Jamel Bowie, who said in her article last year, she wrote an article, Why Juneteenth Matters. And she said, regarding the announcement of making Juneteenth a paid holiday, quote, there's obviously a certain opportunism here an attempt to respond to the moment and win favorable coverage with as little sacrifice as possible. So while this is a great occasion, greatly celebrated, it's not really costing 
this country much. And we need to continue down this road of recognizing the great accomplishments of our African ancestors and get to that point of examining reparations. And I would encourage all of you to sign my resolution 1039, which in fact supports the bill that's in the state legislature that calls for the establishment of a state remedies commission to examine how remedies for reparation will be distributed. And finally, I invite you all to my 20th, yes, 20th Juneteenth program. It will be held tomorrow from five to seven at Sunny Carson Park, also known as Linden Park on Linden Boulevard in Vermont, beginning at five. We will have uh, Joy Chattel's daughter who fought for the landmarking of 227 Duffield Street there, as well as a speaker about Juneteenth. We'll have refreshments. We'll have victory music and dance to dance presentation. We'll have African drumming and you're all welcome. Thank you so much for the extended time. Thank you so much, Councilmember Barron. Are there any other members who wish to speak at this time? No, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you so much. I'll now call on Speaker Corey Johnson to close today's stated meeting. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. <clears throat> the stated meeting of June 17th, 2021 stands in recess. Thank you all, congratulations.